You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger from Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. 
Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Hey, folks. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Panera now delivers... So you can order good, clean food right to your office or door or porch or backyard or front yard or apartment or dorm or castle or shop or work site or wherever for lunch, dinner and everywhere in between. Click the banner to order or visit PaneraBread.com. Participating locations only. Panera. Food as it should be. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. And welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos radio show. I'm Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network. And I'd like to give a shout out to our listeners in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the villages, Florida, Las Vegas, and Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Colorado Springs and Boulder, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California. Indeed, we are everywhere. We are everywhere. And joining me today as my co-host is the president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and that is George Landreth. George, welcome to the Conservative Commandos radio show. Thank you. This is the place I want to be. Okay, me too. Well, George, with all the news that is going on with the investigation and Mueller and all those people, there has been a piece of news that I know you personally have been affected by. Maybe you didn't get a an apology from the IRS, but the Justice Department has settled with conservative groups over IRS scrutiny. And George, I know Frontiers of Freedom has been hit with IRS scrutiny, as have the Conservative Commandos radio show. I didn't get an apology, George, did you? I didn't receive one unless you count the one that the, um, that, uh, the Justice Department read and, and had the IRS uh, sign. But I, I don't think they're going to mail it to me, and I don't think they're going to sign it uh, for me personally. Uh, my suspicion is, is that's the best we're going to get. But it is interesting because it's a change. If you recall, 
the first thing that Barack Obama did was say that he was outraged and angry. Then within a couple of weeks, it was it never happened. And mm. um, and then uh, and then it was just, a, you know, they it was just an accident and it was not purposeful. It was mismanagement, nothing more, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so at least now they have admitted what they did. Uh, they've named Lois Lerner as a ringleader bad gal, you know, uh, bad guy in this. And um, I mean, I'm glad to see that. But to be honest, I want to see her in a in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of nice, George. Have a congressional investigation. Let's have a special a special counsel drawn up to investigate things like the the IRS and their extra scrutiny of conservative groups. Uh, we could get another one about the Benghazi massacre. Uh, how about another one on Fast and Furious? I mean, George, we could have all kinds of special prosecutions going on, can't, couldn't we? Yeah, well, and you know what they say. It's uh, the cover-up's always worse than the crime. <clears throat> so even, you know, so the point is somebody can say, well, that wasn't illegal. It was just bad policy. And mm -hmm. my answer would be, well, fine. Then stop lying about it, because when you lie about it under uh, oath, you get in trouble. Yeah. Well, the IRS emails point out to political um, affiliation in Tea Party targeting scandal and yep. that a judge ordered the IRS to reveal who took part in the Tea Party targeting. You yep. mentioned Lois Lerner. Was there anyone else? Well, I suspect there there were. I mean, I suspect that she was the focal point of it. But obviously, there were people on staff that you know agreed with her and helped because there was a lot of dissembling going on, a lot of hiding of information going on when the uh, when when this was all kind of came to light. They were meeting together and colluding as to how they could essentially escape responsibility for what they did. Um, so you know, she's the the you know the the ringleader, but. Uh, there was, she wasn't the only person. Well, Vern Buchanan has rejected the IRS apology on, on no. targeting. And there, uh, from what I understand, some groups actually got a cash settlement from the IRS. I don't yeah. know if that was just to cover their legal costs or what. I don't know. I mean, I, we've not gotten any uh, indication that we would get a dime, and I wasn't expecting that we would. That's kind of how it works. You know, in, if you or I... Um, through our misbehavior, harm someone else, uh, the, a court would make us uh, make them whole again uh, to you know pay the damages of what we caused. But when you're the government, you basically get to walk away and shrug your shoulders and say, "Tough luck, dude." And um, and that's what the IRS is going to do, and it's what they have done. And even so, the IRS wouldn't pay these uh, bills anyhow. It'd be the taxpayer. Unless they're going to take Lois Lerner's, uh, you know, home from her or take away her retirement plan and use that money, then um, then basically we're paying for our own damages. And, well, uh, George, you know, that that's a good question. And let me ask you this. You being an attorney, could Lois Lerner be sued for her part in this? Could she personally be sued by the that by the injured parties? Um, the challenge, I mean, I think she should be able to be sued, um, but the challenge is that often government officials receive either um, unqualified immunity or qualified immunity. And in any event, what that really means, if it's unqualified immunity, it basically means you can't sue them at all. And if it's uh, qualified immunity, it uh, very much limits what you can uh, sue them for and and, uh, and what your burden of proof is and so forth. And uh, it's just it's basically designed to not let every disgruntled citizen sue some bureaucrat in the government, which I understand. But I think the uh, the idea that there is nothing a bureaucrat can do to be sued is nuts. And, and, and she's the poster child for the need for reform here. I would argue, um, you know, so are some of the actions you see going on right now in the Justice Department, some of the things that are going on there. These are things that, that they violate the law. They violate their ethics obligations all the time. They pat themselves on the back and say they're just being a good prosecutor. And, uh, and there's nothing we can do about it. And I think that's wrong, too. Well, George, I think it's wrong, too. For instance, anybody can sue anything for any reason. I mean, you can be sued. I can be sued for right. things that we say on this radio show. 
maybe we need to teach people like Lois Lerner uh, a we need to teach them a lesson. Well, and liability what does if, that. What if what if a hundred a hundred groups, a hundred conservative groups got together and sued her privately, either individually individually or as a group, not expecting to gain anything, but let's put the screws on her the way she has put the screws on a lot of other people. Yeah, or the way the DOJ does that to people sometimes when they want to squeeze them. Um, you know, that's an interesting idea, and um, I, I'm I'm for it in principle. The question would be is 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 you know would it be successful or would those cases get bumped quickly? This is the interesting thing to me. Um, you're right. We could get sued, and for example, the threat of a suit is what makes us be more careful. Um, there you go. So the yeah. next IRS commissioner maybe wouldn't do this. That's with, exactly right. With the memory that Lois Lerner got sued years after she was out of that position. But yeah. if it has been proven that she conspired with others to cause harm and damage, George, I know you and Frontiers of Freedom have been harmed and damaged by Absolutely. Lois Lerner and the actions of the IRS. Yeah. Maybe you won't get anything except satisfaction of dragging her butt into court, causing her some aggravation and pain and missing work. But the next IRS commissioner would not do it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, there is something about fear of losing your home, your retirement, your future that makes you behave more rationally. There's a reason why, I mean, I, I don't have anger management problems, but I know people who do, and they manage to c maintain their composure because right. they understand they can't go punching everybody who frustrates them because they don't want to give them their house. And, um, you know, and I would like for future IRS uh, administrators and employees to understand they can't take away my constitutional rights simply because they are belong to a different party and they would, and they wish I would <laughs> shut up. And, uh, and if they do that, they should have to pay. There were, I mean, there were civil rights laws passed that were, uh, that made sheriffs liable for taking away the constitutional rights of minorities. I think that that standard should be applied to Lois Lerner. She took away fundamental constitutional rights of a large swath of Americans. And George, I think she we, only have, we have about a minute before we go to the next break. But are you familiar with video journalist Jason Madeira? I've heard of him. Well, the most interesting piece of video, you know, we've seen we've seen people do investigative journalism. Uh, Waters on Fox does it. Uh, James O'Keefe does it. Well, Jason did a video where he tracked down Lois Lerner and oh, followed yeah. her around her. That. And she looked, she looked very aggravated, very un, un at ease about that. Hey, George, I she ran to neighbors' houses, I think, and knocked on the door trying to, to escape him. Houses. She did. She went to neighbors' houses. The neighbors refused to let her in. Well, good. She deserves a little bit of pain and suffering. All the pain and suffering she has caused mm -hmm. others. Turnabout's fair play. And remember what good old Barack Obama told us, George. We need to reward our friends, punish our enemies. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Landreth, President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, KRLN Radio, iHeart Radio, AM FM 24-7, Talk America Radio Network, American Political Radio. Today, our show is being brought to you, like all our shows, by the First Amendment, and it is protected by the Second. George and I will be right back. We've got great guests we want to tell you about. 
the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution, and that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family. Starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family, that's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. I'm Sharon Engel, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can lead, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Schrader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. You are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth, President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcast, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network. Also, please like us, friend us, follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Twitter, it's CC Radio Show, CC Radio Show on Twitter. And on Facebook, we have the Conservative Commandos Radio Show Facebook group. Please join us. We don't put a lot of posts on there 
accept replays of our shows and who our guests are and occasionally something that our host may have written. Also, you can hear our show any time of the day from your telephone by calling 712-770-9576. You know, George, before we get into our guests, there's something I want to say about the last segment we did. Hey, I'm not for suing people. I'm not for creating harm in people's lives. But, George, the left uses the courts very effectively. I think the right should start to do the same thing. I agree. We have to figure out how to solve this problem because there are certain things we simply don't do, and they do. So it's like we go to uh, a rumble, and we go with... uh, a flashlight and they've got, you know, a, a rocket propelled grenade. Right. Um, you know, they, they do all kinds of things, whether it's the way they abuse courts and lawsuits, the way they uh, shut down debate. You've seen uh, the, uh, the survey where 71% of Americans agree that political correctness is shutting down the debate. And of course the, the, the debate that's primarily being shut down is conservatives. It's not, you know, if, if you're um, Nancy Pelosi can, cons- Political correctness is not shutting you down. Well, George, I'm getting a little bit tired of hearing conservatives say, well, that's what they do. We're not going to do it. We're going to be above all that. Well, you know, George, there's something called dying of a theory. For instance, the South died of of a theory. The South during the Civil War fought that war with the idea of states' rights. And where it affected the armies was, and this is just one example, when Robert E. Lee surrendered at Appomattox, his soldiers were literally in rags. They had no shoes. That was the Army of Northern Virginia. But it's sitting in warehouses in South Carolina was 20,000 new uniforms and 20,000 new pair of boots that they refused to take out of their warehouses and send to Lee's army because that was not the army of South Carolina. That was the army of Northern Virginia. Just an example, just an example. Well, the other thing I think people have to recognize, too, is um, I, I, I played a lot of sports when I was younger, and, and you play the game the, the way the refs are calling it. So if the refs are letting you stay in the key too long, and they're not calling the three-second violation, you tend to spend more time there. If you don't, the other team is going to get all the rebounds. Uh, they're going to be, you know, so, you know, it's a, you have to, call, you play the game the way it's being called. Um, I'm not suggesting we cheat, but you know, if you're a cornerback and they, uh, the refs are letting you, uh, you know, bump the receiver, you know, at six yards and they're just at five. And, and if you, if the other team does it, they're going to win. If you don't respond and, and play the game, the way it's being called. And so I would argue we have to play the game the way it's being called. And that George, means we, we have got, to get tough sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. George, we got three great guests joining us today. Absolutely. Um, we've got uh, Sydney <laughs> Powell, um, who is, uh, well, you probably know her from the fact that she wrote a really influential book entitled Licensed to Lie, Exposing Corruption in the Justice Department. Um, she wrote this a few years back, and um, she's been the lead counsel on more than 500 appeals. She was the youngest U.S. attorney um, when she first became a U.S. attorney in the entire country. Um, she's, um, a, 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 an attorney who, uh, she went to law school at the university of North Carolina. She's a Tar Heel. And, uh, we're going to talk to her about what's going on in the justice department and, and specifically what some of the, the problems are, some of the abuses and what some of their forms need to be. And the context of course, is in what we've been seeing in the news of late. So, you know, that's the conversation. So I think it will be interesting because she's very knowledgeable and I, I, I know her pretty well and we've talked, um, in advance of this, uh, uh, interview. So I feel like I, I have a good sense that it's going to be both timely, but it's not going to replow the same things they've heard on other shows because she's really going to talk to us about, uh, legally what's being damaged in our rule of law system. 
So that's our first one. Our next one is Hans von Spakovsky. Now, everyone I, I'm sure knows him. He's at the Heritage Foundation. He and John Fund have written excellent books on voter integrity, and uh, he's at the Heritage Foundation. Um, and we're not going to talk to him about voter um uh, integrity day we're going to talk to him about the uranium one deal he has uh written a great article and we want to talk to him about that article but what in the article he discusses uh some of the real deep questions that have to be answered and i i suspect that we are um thinking right now that hi- this is all hillary's doing and he, he certainly doesn't do anything to exonerate hillary but he points out that actually um robert Mueller was involved mm. he's up to his neck in that and uh, and so was Eric Holder, and so was Barack Obama. So the point there is this is a perhaps very widespread corruption problem that uh, you know. Anyhow, I, I just think it'll be a very interesting conversation. Uh, Hans is is a smart guy, and 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 like Sydney, they'll both be uh, I think great. Well, again, I'm going to say we've got two great guests joining us today, Hans von Spakovsky and Sidney Powell. You know, George, talking about Mueller and Uranium One, uh, touching back on what we were talking about in the first part of our show here, lawsuits. I think that we should have a special prosecutor to investigate Uranium One. Let's have dual special prosecutors going. They can have theirs investigating the Russian collusion, and we will have ours investigating the Uranium One deal. Yeah. The problem, of course, is is that uh, Robert Mueller might end up being a subject of that investigation. So you let it be, George. Oh, I'm fine with that. I'm just let it be. Yeah. You, you know, George, where were all the special co- prosecutors when Barack Obama was in the White House? Yeah, there wasn't where one for was the IRS. The, there wasn't one for for the um, the gun running. There wasn't nope. one for Benghazi where nope. they lied to us. There wasn't one for nope. the big lie they told about health care. If you like your health care, keep it. This was the most corrupt administration I've ever seen. They lied about everything and they abused power in ways that most Americans could not begin to imagine. And quite frankly, Richard Nixon didn't even fantasize about abusing power the way these people did. Oh, uh, yeah. How about Just, all the fake email addresses where they use those to hide so they wouldn't have to answer uh, FOIA requests? Right. Uh, the, that was done the systematically who, throughout the government. The woman who was in charge of the Environmental Protection yep. Agency, yeah, yeah. her name is escaping me right now. She had a fake email address. Yep. Hillary had a fake email address. Other people in the in the Obama administration it and the Clinton that, campaign had yeah. fictitious email addresses. It turns and, out that was the norm. And George, is that not a violation of the law? It is when it's a government official. I don't know about campaigns, but for the government official, the law is very clear that government business has to be conducted in such a way that the records can be maintained for purposes of the Sunshine Laws. That they can't have secret. Uh, communications and emails. Um, you know, the, even the uh, people at the Obama administration, they used to meet across the street from the White House in coffee shops so they wouldn't have to log people in that they didn't want to log into the White House because they were meeting with unsavory people. Hey, George, in the uh, two minutes or so that we have left in this segment, let's talk about the Mueller investigation. You're down there in Washington. What are you hearing? Well, you know, it's. I think the interesting thing is, is that um, Mueller's first big splash was to uh, get two people that had nothing to do with uh, with the Trump campaign at all at the time. You know, it's tax evasion stuff and filling out forms, filing as a and, and stuff like that stuff from ten and twelve years ago. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that the, the kid that they got was twenty nine years old, and they've accused him of of uh, you know, being, uh, uh, I guess they, you know, lying to investigators and they asked them certain things or his recollection didn't seem complete to them when they compared it to other things and apparently some emails and they've decided that, you know, so it's just interesting because I would have thought after, you know, we're now almost a year removed, um, that we'd actually have something dealing with showing Russian collusion. And of course we don't. The only Russian collusion we see is with the Democratic Party, the DNC fusion, GPS fusion, you know that stuff. Um, it's all it's all Democratic stuff. So it's interesting. We'll see how it all you know. 
But but it's clear what's going on now. There's just going to be an attempt to squeeze these people and uh, shape their testimony. And we'll talk to uh, we'll talk to Sidney Powell about that question. But I think it presents some real problems because when a prosecutor tries to force someone to testify a certain way, they're under a lot of pressure to say things to make him happy so that they can get off. And that sounds to me like he's encouraging someone to perjure themselves. George, I got to ask you this question or make this comment. The former attorney general in this, of the state of Pennsylvania is in jail right now. And the reason that she's in jail is from l- releasing or leaking testimony to a, from a grand jury. Mm-hmm. Could Mueller be guilty of the same thing? Well, certainly there's been a lot of leaks. So the question is, who's doing it? And it would be very interesting. Um, You could argue that we should have a special prosecutor to find out who's leaking. Um, You know, the leak that occurred uh, over the weekend uh, could have come from a lot of sources, but the leaks that have come out earlier could not. And with that, we'll go to a break. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth, President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom. And yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and simulcast on stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas, and Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Colorado Springs and Boulder, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California. Indeed, we are everywhere. We are everywhere. Don't forget, follow us and like us on Facebook and Twitter. Don't go away. We'll be right back with our first guest, Sydney Powell. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution, and that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family. Starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family, that's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. I'm Sharon Engel, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. 
I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. I just want to remind our listeners that if you would like to hear a rebroadcast of our show today, you can always check out our websites, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. Also, you can go to Red Nation Rising Radio and Red State Talk Radio, both .coms. And if you don't have a computer and you don't have a radio, no problem. All you need is a phone. You can call this number and listen to the Conservative Commandos, 712-770-9676. We're everywhere. I have the distinct privilege of introducing Sydney Powell. She uh, has a really distinguished background. I'm going to give you just the highlights of it because I don't want to take up the whole show with all of the things that she's been doing. But she uh, went. She got her, uh, her Juris Doctorate at the University of North Carolina. She began her legal career as the youngest U.S. attorney in the country. And um, she's been the lead counsel on more than 500 appeals. And she also has published a very important book. I would recommend it to all of our listeners. It's called License to Lie. Exposing Corruption in the Justice Department. And um, it's, it's an interesting book, not just because it exposes problems there, but it's not written as if it's just an expose. It actually, at more, more accurately, it reads like it's a legal thriller and uh, goes through and talks about what's going on and, and what, um, what needs to be done to fix it. Anyhow, you have probably seen her today, if not uh, earlier this week, on... Uh, various television shows, but she, of course, does this all the time. So we are very glad to have uh, Sydney on the Conservative Commandos. So, Sydney, welcome. Thanks so much, George. It's a pleasure to be with you. I always look forward to seeing you and speaking with you. Well, let's just talk about um, your background for this discussion, I think, is pretty important. One of the things that's always troubled me, I have a very close personal friend who, because he had the misfortune of working for someone who was important and powerful, whom a prosecutor wanted to get, they squeezed him to death, almost bankrupted him, and um, because they wanted him to wear a wire, and he was unwilling to wear a wire because he just thought that was, you know, he knew his employer Wrong. hadn't done anything, and he's just, I'm not doing that. I'm simply, that's disloyal, and I wouldn't do that. And so they ba- made his life miserable and largely bankrupted him. Um, so how does that apply to the news we see this week, or does it? Well, yeah. It, oh, it does. It does. That's exactly what the special prosecution team is doing to young George Papadopoulos. And that's what they're going to do to Mr. Manafort and to Mr. Gates. These shots are just the opening salvos. Um, I'm sure there is a lot more to come. Um, Mr. Papadopoulos has, has got a plea deal. So as long as he cooperates and sings the song they want him to sing, or as uh, somebody said, composes what they want him to compose, 
he will be fine and he will probably walk. I mean, I think the maximum penalty he's looking at is five years, but with the sentencing guidelines the way they are and the government agreeing to a reduction in those, he's looking at zero to six months, and that could be served in a halfway house or on probation. So he's he's got a deal. And the only thing they got him on was lying to the feds about the nature and extent of his conversations with some Russians. There was nothing illegal about his conversations with the Russians. You can talk to Russians. Um, unfortunately, the Russians totally played him and tried to get a toehold into the Trump, Trump campaign. It did not work. There was actually never a meeting or anything came of it at all other than Mr. Papadopoulos talking to them and trying to use that to increase his own stature, I think, in the Trump campaign, but nobody ever ever took the meeting. So there was never anything official, and um, it didn't amount to a hill of beans. But Mr. Papadopoulos was not completely forthcoming with the federal agents when they asked him about when he talked to them. He got the dates wrong, and he tried to minimize his conversations, and they obviously had a lot of email traffic from him already to the Russians and within the campaign. So they arrested him on July 27th, and he started cooperating immediately. I would imagine that anybody campaign-related at all that he has talked to since July 27th was taped on his end, or he was wearing a wire in any of those conversations. Now, the, the, now, yeah, uh, they they may not be incriminating conversations. They may very well be exculpatory of the people that he talked to, but the defense is going to have to fight to get them. Right, right. Now, uh, let's just make sure we've, for our listeners, um, perjury typically is a charge that occurs. Uh, obviously, you've been sworn in under oath. Uh, there's almost always when you're sworn in under oath, you have a court reporter. So we have the exact words you used. You're asked questions, you answer the question, et cetera. Um, and and perjury is a serious charge, and I don't have any problem with prosecuting perjurers. Um, the problem with lying to federal investigators is, as I understand it, they interview you, they take notes, and then they interview other people and take notes. They compare those notes, and if they determine there's discrepancies, they can say you lied to them. Well, in this case, they're comparing it to emails. Okay. So there is harder evidence. That, that is harder of, evidence. But even yeah. so, it's, it's like one of the things I noticed that you mentioned is he tried to minimize. Um, so if someone says to me, you know, how much do you have for lunch today? And I am sensitive of the fact that my waistline isn't what it used to be. I might minimize what I had. I won't lie about exactly. it. Exactly. But I might yeah. minimize it, you know, make it right. sound like it wasn't as big a hamburger as it was or whatever it is. Right. Exactly. I, that wouldn't generally qualify for perjury. Generally, it requires more than telling the truth but making it sound like it wasn't as bad as it was. That's not quite the stuff perjury is made of, and yet it can be the stuff that – I guess that's my problem here is I yes. see this as – I see this as essentially a tool that prosecutors can use when no one's done anything wrong to still squeeze them anyhow. Exactly. And, it's very and, squishy. Yeah, and play this sort of game, and it, it worries me because – um Certainly, I'm a law enforcement kind of guy. I mean, I, I want bad guys locked up. I want my uh, wife and children and my family and loved ones, my neighbors. I want them all safe. I don't want bad people walking the street. Um, but it seems to me that this the problem with this is this is kind of used, I don't know, as I see it, poten just it's so – the potential for abuse is just so uh, incredible. I know that as a U.S. attorney, you've seen all this from the inside. You've written a book on it. Uh, in, in, we, in this segment here, we've only got about uh, two, maybe three minutes max left. Um, but what would you – tell us a little bit about kind of how this plays out, how these tools are used. Um, and sometimes they might be legitimate tools, but how they can be abused. Well, they can be abused, just as you said, by taking something that's relatively minor and insignificant and turning it into a, literally a federal crime making a federal crime out of it and then using that to squeeze somebody and forcing them to do things that they're not comfortable doing and you know maybe even shouldn't be for different reasons but to cooperate with the government by whatever means the government wants that done otherwise he's looking at five or ten years in prison i think they could actually make a separate crime out of each false statement 
So, I mean, he could be looking at spending his, the rest of his life in prison, and that's probably what they told him. He's a 30-year-old young man. Right, you know, right. He can get out, he can get out not, time to collect Social Security. Right, yeah. Right. And you know, the Russians obviously played him in this instance. So the whole thing is extremely unfortunate. If he had had a good lawyer, he would have just said when they had a conversation with him, I want my lawyer. Right. Uh, I mean, you, you can't believe this. I'm the government. I'm here to help you and just tell me everything you know if you're right. involved in anything like this because they will take the smallest detail and screw you with it. Oh, yeah. Well, th- for example, like let's say I'm I'm being investigated and I go talk to witnesses and I try to help them shape their testimony and shade their testimony and maybe even get them to, you know, help me out that way. Is that illegal for me to do? Uh, yes, that could very well be deemed a uh, witness tampering or obstruction of justice. And that's a uh, felony, you have to be isn't very, it? Oh yeah. You have to be very, very careful in that regard. Yeah. But, that's what I thought. Yeah. Now, now if the government does trade, it, so I remember hearing that somewhere in law school. So I'm glad right, I, yeah, if the government does it, it's no problem. They can use whatever pressure they want to use to make somebody say what they want them to say. And because it's the government, it's not a problem. I mean, one of the reasons I wrote License to Lie is to help people understand all of this and the human toll it takes when prosecutors commit misconduct. We need a complete revamping of our criminal justice system from beginning to end with a better means of holding people accountable at each stage. I I couldn't agree more. We've got to take a quick break, but when we come back, that's the topic I want to jump into with you because that that that's the you couldn't have made a better segue, quite frankly. So with that, I just want to remind our listeners that we're coming to you on the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, and of course, if you're not listening for uh, you know through traditional radio, which probably most of you are, there's also the internet with you know Al Gore's amazing there actually with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AMFM 24-7. Don't go away. We will be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution, and that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family. Starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family, that's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. I'm Sharon Engel, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. 
I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. I just want to remind our listeners that you can, if you've missed something, if the phone rang, if you sneezed and you missed a syllable, you can always hear rebroadcast of the show. Just go to our website. There's other information there too as well, ccrsnetwork.com or ccrshow.com. And, of course, Red Nation Rising Radio and Red State Talk Radio are other good places. And with your phone and this number, you can always listen in, 712-770-9676. We have been talking with Sydney Powell. She is the author of License to Lie. Exposing Corruption in the Justice Department. And in the last segment, we were talking about the potential for abuse. And she pointed out some of the things that need to be revamped in our justice system. I think all of our listeners here understand the value of having uh, law and order and getting the bad guys off the streets. Nobody's interested in having a system where bad guys can essentially rule the roost and, and get away with it. But what we want is that balance that you were talking about where there's accountability, and we get the bad guys, but we don't empower the prosecutors to abuse the system. I think the way Madison described it in the Federalist Papers was we want a government powerful enough to prevent people from, you know, bad people from harming individuals, I'm paraphrasing, uh, but then require the government to restrain itself. And um, I think that's what you're, you're saying, that some of these restraints on the government have, uh, have gotten too loose. And, and so let's talk about what needs to be done there. Well, for one thing, the grand jury system is supposed to be a check and balance on the prosecutors, but prosecutors have become very adept at using grand juries to rubber stamp whatever they want to uh, produce to them, whether they want an indictment or a no bill, as it's called. If they want to be cleared of – want somebody cleared of something, they'll ask the grand jury to no bill it, which takes the burden off the prosecutor if it's a political situation. Uh, we saw that in, in some cases a couple of years ago, some of the high-profile cases that were deemed racial incidents. Um, the grand jury needs to be educated on its role as a check and balance on prosecutors. I'm, I don't think they are nearly enough, and prosecutors need to be held accountable. They have absolute immunity from prosecution – well, not from prosecution, but from civil suit, even if they intentionally hide evidence – intentionally make up crimes and send people to prison for 25 years for something they didn't do. So all, they, they all you need to do is, even if they behave not by mistake do something but do it on purpose they still have immunity? Yes, they have immunity. Wow. And that needs to go away. Uh, police officers have to operate under qualified immunity and police officers have to make instant decisions with their adrenaline pumping in life-threatening situations. I mean, you can understand how police officers can easily make mistakes and pull a trigger too fast or, or not pull one fast enough because they're, the situation is entirely different. But prosecutors can commit calculated, deliberate misconduct and ruin somebody's life 
essentially right. take their life and yeah. and nothing happens to them. Yeah, that you're right. That does have to change. What are some other things that I, I mean, the grand, you know, that I think what you're talking about is I've always people say you can indict a ham, a ham sandwich, which is right. You're, you're getting at, which is an indictment simply means because everyone just so our listeners understand, it's not an actual trial. It's a it's a closed room affair where you have the prosecutor and the people he's asking questions of. And the only information provided to them is the quest, information the prosecutor would, wishes them to have. There's no exculpatory evidence presented to them whatsoever, um, unless, of course, the prosecutor wants to do that. But he's not required to. Um, and then, uh, you know, so little wonder then they say, so what do you think we should do? And they've just spent 14 days listening to what a rat the guy is. Then they'll indict. Oh, it doesn't take that long. Yeah. I mean, a good prosecutor can get a five to ten count indictment in fifteen minutes. Okay. Wow. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I know. So you're saying it's really selective information then. Yes, it's often just a case agent testifying to the generalities of the counts that form the basis of the indictment, and offering to answer any questions. Wow, but but no real specifics. Words, we think he robbed a bank. We think he did X, but but not really laying out like in a trial. You'd have to actually lay it out. You're no, there saying, there would be specifics, but just the just the summary by the case agent. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, you're right. I mean, initially, uh, when the founders kind of contemplated the idea of of you know, and we of of a uh, grand jury, the idea was. It was an improvement over the way star chambers used to work and so forth where the king could just like, I want this person dragged in and tried. And so now you had to have a jury of their peers at least say it was worth a trial. Um, so what's happened that it doesn't work as well today? What's, what's, what's the transition? Why isn't it as good a protection as maybe we thought it was 200 years ago? Well, I think we've just become conditioned to take the word of the prosecutor without much question. Judges, unfortunately, do it all the time. That's one of the big criticisms in my book, License to Lie, was that judges – I just couldn't get them to to listen and consider the possibility that the government had done something wrong here. They don't like to reverse criminal convictions, particularly in high-profile cases that have been very expensive to prosecute, and you know, a lot has been invested in them on both sides, and they're loath to turn somebody that the government deems a criminal loose. But that's what's going to have to happen to get the attention of, of prosecutors who commit wrongdoing. That and a few disbarments would be kind of handy. Right uh, now, Bill I, Holtz, yeah. one of the legal leading ethics experts in the country, filed a grievance against Andrew Weissman, who's now – who's both the lead villain in my book and also on Mueller's task force. And wow. <laughs> Department so, of Justice he, so is defending him against this. One of the lead this. villains – uh, who has a history of a prosecutorial abuse is on the team that's we're reading about this week with uh... exactly oh wow exactly yeah as soon as I heard that Mueller's task force had done a pre-dawn raid of Paul Manafort's house that's textbook Andrew Weissman the more he can do to bully intimidate and threaten the happier he is. There was no real good reason to do that, was there? I mean, if they'd come in at 12 noon, they would have gotten the same information. Absolutely right? none. They we, could have gone at 10 o'clock in the morning. Exactly. Right. The it, judge it, should never have signed off on that warrant. It is a little bit intimidating. I can imagine if I'm you know, asleep at 5 in the morning and uh, there's a pound at my door and there's a bunch of guys, you know, it looks like a SWAT team at my door. It's like, wow. Yeah, I don't think there was a pound. There wasn't a pound. They picked the lock and entered <laughs> Oh, really? uh, entered. I mean, you wake up with 15 people in your house holding guns at you. Wow. Yeah. Well, and that strikes me as just irresponsible unless these people have a history of like, you know, drug dealers or whatever. Um, exactly. He may have heard them come in and thought it was a prowler and could have come down the stairs with a gun prepared Shooting. to shoot. Yes. And then they shoot right. him and kill him. All yes. to All to execute a, a warrant for paperwork. Right. I mean, you know, I, that's stunning to me. Um, yes, I, I, I thought that was absolutely horrible and absolutely no need for it. Um, how do we solve this problem? Because I've seen so often where, you know, I, I, I'm an attorney and I understand the jokes about attorneys, but the reality is I know really good people who are attorneys. You know, these are people that are in the tradition of a Thomas Jefferson and a, and a Patrick Henry. They're patriots. They love freedom. You're one of them, for example. I'd like to think I am. But we have this reputation, and I would argue it's because of what we see going on in this case. 
how do attorneys clean up the profession so that people who care about freedom are the ones uh, in charge of the profession instead of these essentially just dirty dogs? Well, raising public awareness is a huge part of that. Uh, Toward that goal, I I want you to know and your listeners to know that one of the entities I complain about in the book or tell the story of is the Texas Bar failing to meet its own standards in handling prosecutorial misconduct. The Texas Bar, of which I've been a member for more years than I care to divulge publicly, will not let me speak on the book at a Texas Bar function. Interesting. So yep. they've decided that you are speaking too much truth and it would be better if they didn't uh, allow you to have a platform. Yeah, the excuse was that I made uh, prosecutors angry. Well, good <laughs> prosecutors are not angry about this, and most right. prosecutors are good prosecutors. No, I, I, I would firmly agree with you. That's the problem. That, you know, is, yeah, right. It, it does but not if we don't do a better job of weeding out the bad apples, you're right. It makes the whole barrel stink and go rotten. Yeah. Well, we are we are up against the clock, and I, I wish that we had another hour to do this. But before we go, I want to make sure you have a chance to tell our listeners how they can get a hold of your book because it's an excellent book. I've read it. It's, 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 not, it's riveting, and it's factual. But like I said, it doesn't read just like an expose. It really reads almost like a novel, a, a thriller. But it's License to Lie, Exposing Corruption in the Justice Department. How can they follow you, your work, every other thing you're doing, get your book, et cetera? Follow me on Twitter at Sydney Powell, the number one. It's S I D N E Y P O W E L L. Uh, friend me on Facebook or ask for a connection on LinkedIn. Um, like License to Lie on Facebook. Uh, my blog is seekingjustice.org, but it's way out of date. I've written articles, uh, news making articles for the New York Observer, and I've got an article out on Mueller's task force in the Hill that went viral. Um, I just try to focus on prosecutorial misconduct and government misconduct. I'm firmly committed to the principle that the government ought to have to live by the same standards and rules it imposes on us, if not higher ones. Yeah, it's the rule of law, and you're a champion of the rule of law, and that's something I'm proud of and I appreciate. Sydney, thanks so much for spending the time with us today. I know that you have been and 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 will continue over the next uh, little while just to be booked. And so the fact that you took time to be with us and our listeners means a lot to me. So thanks so much. Thank you, George. I appreciate all you do too. It takes all of us and we can make a difference. Absolutely. We're coming down the conservative commandos radio network. We will be right back. The conservative commandos radio show is the commander of the conservative commandos radio network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution, and that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family. Starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family, that's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, 
We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. And welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts of our shows, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network. Or at midnight, log on to redstatetalkradio.com. Or you can hear the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at any time from your telephone by calling 712-770-9576. You don't need an app. You don't need to download anything. You don't even need a radio or a computer. Just a telephone and this number, 712-770-9576. George, that was a great, great interview with Sydney Powell, packed full of information. That's how she is all the time. Wanted to talk with you for a minute about revisionist history, revisionist history, George. We, we see a lot of it. We hear a lot of it. A lot of groups seem to be offended by every little thing. They want statues torn down. They want buildings, names of buildings to be changed. And now it is hitting the father of our country. Christ Church wants to remove remembrances of George Washington. Yep. In Alexandria, Virginia, uh, a uh, first church I have attended as a boy, actually as a baby, um, it's in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, not far from Mount Vernon. He was the vestryman there. He was a a founding member, uh, attended there with his family. Uh, And there's a little plaque, uh, I think, somewhere in the church and also on the, the row that was his. Uh, that says, you know, George Washington not slept here, but sat here. I mm-hmm. mean, maybe the if the, you know, maybe if the preacher's uh, sermon was boring, he slept there. But, you know, it doesn't say that, you know, it just says sat here. Um, but apparently that's being taken down. This is the statement. This week, the church announced it was pulling down the memorial. Um, and then here's a statement. The plaques in our sanctuary made some in our presence feel unsafe. <laughs> unsafe. unsafe. So I don't know. I mean, I've seen the plaque. It's not like it has spikes sticking out of it. It's just a little brass plaque. You know, George Washington and his family sat on this row type thing. You know, I mean, um, I get it, George. So somebody rubs that plaque. A ghost of George Washington is going to emerge from that plaque and enslave somebody. Right. I guess. Of course, I mean, he, that's he, the only thing I could think of, George. If George a Washington makes somebody feel unsafe, they're not even saying uncomfortable. What they're yeah. saying is unsafe. Safe? Yeah, these are snowflakes. Um, first oh, of yeah, all, people yeah, yeah, have to yeah, remember, yeah. George Washington freed his slaves, okay? He was the only major founding father who did that. Uh, so anyhow, I find it very odd. But uh, anyhow... This is our snowflake left. Now, I I just want to remind our listeners, go back just a month or two ago, and Donald Trump talked about what's next, take down uh, statues of George Washington. And the the left just laughed at him like, oh, don't be silly. That's not what this is about. Usually you have to wait a decade for the thing they claim is silly to come about. We didn't have to wait a year or even a quarter. It was simply a month or so. You know, George, they've got their undies in a bunch over a brass plaque come in a church that George Washington was a founding member of. Yeah. We're talking about George Washington, the founding father of this country. Yeah. Where's the less righteous indignation over Harvey Weinstein? Right. Over Kevin Spacey, over people that have committed criminal acts. Oh, but they're their friends, George. It's their right. friends. And they're liberals. And Nothing they're like, liberals. It's, it's what you call liberal insurance. It's a great product if you can get it. You're not, you're not, you're not held accountable. And it's, a, it's the same product. It's the same insurance that uh, Ms. Uh, Lois Lerner had. If you're a liberal, no problem. Life's going to be okay. The law doesn't apply to you. 
common sense doesn't apply to you. It's interesting though, because you know, um, the, if you think about this, um, if we were to take all the utterances of someone like Abraham Lincoln, a, a great American president, um, by today's standards, he would be unelectable because he would be considered a raving racist because he thought that slavery was wrong, but he didn't really think the races were entirely equal. Mm. And he, he made that pretty clear. Um, now, I think you have to judge him by the circumstances he was in. And I think that the question that he may have had some uh, you know, incorrect views about the equality of the races is forgivable when you understand that this was a man who was trying to free people. And that was a big, huge step. But let's take this step and not let's not. Uh, anyhow, to me, it's but this is, the, you know, the next step is eventually we're going to decide that Abraham Lincoln's also unworthy. I mean, there, this this has no ending. We George, let's look allow- at, let's let's investigate for a minute what offends the left and what offends the right. OK, the left is offended by a bronze pa- plaque in Christ Church down there in Virginia, a brass plaque commemorating George Washington. That offends the left. What offends the right? People not standing and honoring our flag during the playing of the national anthem. <laughs> wow, what a <laughs> These two sides, George, think as differently as you can possibly think. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. Um, and and I, I don't actually believe that they're offended by these things, to be honest with you, the left. I personally believe they're just attacking um, our culture because they don't like it. They don't like America. They don't like its traditions. They don't like the Constitution. And they want to do away with them because they consider the Constitution, rather than a standard by which gov- good government should be judged, they consider it an impediment to good government. Mm-hmm. And so well, they'd George, love to do that. Another point of news down there in Virginia, Virginia, as is in New Jersey, are have having gubernatorial elections. Here in New Jersey, a guy by name of Phil Murphy, by the way, who is a, a former Goldman Sachs executive, that the wonderful Democrat Party from New Jersey decide to run as their candidate. And, and by the way, I thought big bankers. Uh, Wall Street executives, especially executives of of Goldman Sachs, I thought they were bad people, George. At least that's what the Democrat Party was telling us last year. But maybe not so much because they've they've nominated Phil Murphy to run for governor. By the way, a guy who has openly admitted he's going to make New Jersey not just a sanctuary city, but a sanctuary state. A guy said that he would have the backs of illegal aliens. But there's also a gubernatorial race going on in Virginia. What's the latest? Well, a pretty amazing ad. I don't know. You guys probably didn't get to see it. You may have heard about it. But there's an ad in which a pickup truck with a uh, Confederate flag and a... um, Ed Gillespie, he's the Republican candidate for uh, governor, bumper sticker, is chasing um, essentially, I, I, I don't know exactly what, one of them was clearly a, a Muslim, but there, I think the others may have been Latinos. But at any rate, uh, essentially brown children, if you will, children of color, chasing them and then chasing them down an alley. And at the end of the commercial, it's kind of a long commercial because the, the truck driver is very, very persistent. Um, th- then um, the kids wake up in their parents' arms. This is a bad dream they're having and so forth. But um, anyhow, so after the uh, f- shooting, um, uh, or the not the shooting, but the uh, terrorist attack in New York, they took the ad down finally. But they, you know, they defended the ad. I've seen them defend the ad. It's like there's nothing that, Ed Gillespie has ever said or done that suggests that he thinks that anyone should be hunting down uh, children of color or any or or white. I mean, any children without Mm -hmm. qualifiers. It's an outrageous smear. And but it lets you know the level of depravity. And I've heard Democrats tell me that they were appalled that he ran ads talking about the issue of uh, sanctuary cities because that was 
uh, uh, race baiting and being fear fear mongering. And then they run this ad, and then I laugh at them. For the well, George, talking hypocrisy. about bad dreams, I'll tell you what a bad dream is. A bad dream is somebody that rents a truck, runs down, kills eight people, injures eleven more. One guy is now a double amputee. Uh, by the way, this person was let in by. The Barack Obama administration. Oh no, George, that wasn't a bad dream. That actually happened, and as we know, yesterday. But you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth, and yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media. K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7, Talk America Radio Network, American Political Radio. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution, and that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family. Starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family, that's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. I'm Sharon Engel, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can lead, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, 
Rick Trader, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. From across the country and around the world, you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Lander, President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcast of our shows, I know you know what I'm going to say, but for rebroadcast of our shows, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network, or at midnight, log on to redstatetalkradio.com. Or you can hear our show any time of the day from your telephone by calling 712-770-9576. You don't need an app. You don't need to download anything. You don't need a radio. You don't need a computer. You don't need an iPad. Just a telephone and the number 712-770-9576. George, you know, this next segment kind of reminds me of that old story. If you get... Caught with your hand in a cookie jar, you yell and scream, look over there, look over there, look over there. Well, apparently, there is some news that the left doesn't want us to know about. They're totally ignoring it. Right. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. For example, the uh, consumer confidence that just came out is the highest it's been since before 9-11. Okay, so that's almost two decades. That's 17 years um, that's kind of amazing. Um, I just think people have to, uh, I hear people occasionally say Donald Trump hasn't done anything. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand the frustration over Obamacare and that tax reform is, uh, you know, moving along slowly, but, uh, but to say that nothing's been going on, look at the economy, the way it's trying look at the Supreme Court, look at the, uh, the ISIS on the run, those sorts of things. Lots of good news out there. And I think that's one of the things the left wants to ignore. They want to pretend there is no good news and that uh, it's just, you know, all doom and gloom. These are the same people, of course, that when the economy stunk and more and more people were giving up hope and not looking for work. Uh, they would somehow try to argue that was good news. Well, George, talking about consumer confidence, it's it's uh, its highest level from 2000. Maybe it has a little bit to do with the fact that the the Dow, the stock market, has hit record highs about 48 or 49 times in the 11 months since Donald Trump took office. Right. And economic growth has eclipsed the three percentage uh, point uh, mark, which it never did during any quarter of Barack Obama's presidency. He's the only president in modern history that can that served eight years and never got uh, three point or three percentage points of uh, economic growth in any of those eight years. Um, you know, those are just those are factors you can't really deal with. I mean, that's unemployment's now, uh, uh, you know, the lowest it's been it, it, just lots of good news out there. And, uh, and I think there's more g- good news to come. Well, George, eight years ago, when we started the conservative commandos radio show, we had a Democrat in the white house, the Democrats controlled the house of representatives, the Democrats controlled the Senate eight years later, Republicans now control all three of those branches of or the, of government, right. the legislative and the executive, and we still maintain control of the Supreme Court. That's something else the Democrats don't want to talk about. They also don't want to talk about the fact that there have been several lawmakers over the past few years that have left the Democrat mm-hmm. Party and have joined the Republican Party. Yeah, one just last week down in North Carolina. He's a seven-term General Assembly member, representative. His name is William Brisson, and um, he uh, withdrew from the Democratic Party and uh, became uh, a Republican, announced that he was going to be a Republican. And he says, I don't have a lot in common with the Democratic Party right now because they have become so liberal 
end mm-hmm. quote. Well, I think when you mention North Carolina, a lot of people are going to remember what happened with the bathroom bill down there. Yeah. I mean, the fact that the that the state legislator, the governor, they all wanted to open up bathrooms to anybody who wanted to use any bathroom that they wanted. I believe that was very unpopular down there. And I believe that also helped lead to the election of Donald Trump. Without the without the state of North Carolina falling into the Trump column, it might have been a lot tougher for uh, for Donald Trump to win that seat. You know, George, we also have DNC head Tom, uh, Tom Perez really doesn't know, really doesn't know the Constitution, George, because he claims the Electoral College was not a creation of the Constitution. <laughs> help me out. Help me understand this, George. Well, I, you know, I think the problem here is that we are assuming that Tom Perez, the chairman of the Democratic Party, um, you know, a former, uh, m- you know, member of the uh, Clinton and or, or the uh, Obama administration. Um, I wasn't he also a congressman? I can't remember. But at any rate, um, we assume that he passed high school civics, <laughs> and I think we're clearly wrong. He obviously failed, and and you know, he um, he was lecturing at the Indiana University School of Law, and he says the elect, you know. Anyhow, it's just amazing to me. It's you know, of course, interesting enough. The uh, um, it is laid out in Article Two of the Constitution. It says, "quote Each state shall appoint in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct a number of electors, equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state may be entitled." Anyhow, uh, so I, I don't know where he's coming from on that, but um, it's an it's an interesting thing that this is what passes for. Uh, leadership in their party. I'm sorry if you don't know the electoral college is in the uh, constitution. Maybe you ought not be the the leader of the one of the two major political parties in the country. You know, George, co- Congress is always holding committees and hearings. Well, maybe they should hold a classroom. The classroom is Civics for Congress 101, yeah. and that every member of Congress should be required to stand as part of their swearing in or inauguration. They should be made to stand up in front of the rest of Congress, read the Constitution, and have them interpret it how they see it. And then take questions possibly from the audience. Be quizzed by the audience. (laughs) Civics 101 for Congress. Yeah, well, they could clearly use it. I don't know if you remember when they were passing uh, Obamacare, the, uh, a reporter asked uh, Speaker Pelosi, can you tell me what in the Constitution gives you the authority to make Americans buy health care? You know what her answer was? Well, I don't recall. Please remind. She said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then went on to the next question. <laughs> So well, that's she, something else the Democrats don't want the public right. to know about. Right, right. You, you know, George, talking about uh, news the once le- the left wants to ignore. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> the pillar of liberalism. But Morgan Freeman is now calling for the gelling of Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I mean, he was- things have got to be bad on that side when Morgan Freeman... Is right. calling for the jailing of Hillary Clinton. Exactly. Well, you know, the way he said it was this. He says, every day Americans will forever know deep down that there is one law for those with money and power and another for the rest of us, uh, you know, if, if she's seen as getting away with something. Whereas he points out if she's in jail her, for her unlawful deeds, um, it would make sure that, that, that uh, no one and then he, for emphasis, adds, and I mean no one is above the law. And that's what the rule of law is supposed to mean. I mean, Hillary should not be above the law. If you or I would have gone to jail for what she did, then she has to go to jail for what she did. Seems only fair to me, George. Yeah, it's, it's called right the rule of law. For, yeah. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. 
coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and simulcast on stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas, and Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Colorado Springs and Boulder, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California. We are everywhere. We are everywhere. Don't go away on the other side of this break. We're going to be speaking with our next guest, Hans von Spakovsky of the Heritage Foundation. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution, and that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family. Starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family, that's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. I'm Sharon Engel, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. Businessman there, the drink on wine. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. I want to remind our listeners that you can always hear a rebroadcast of our show. All you have to do is check out our websites, and there you'll find lots of other information as well. CCRSnetwork.com, 
and ccrshow.com. You can also go to Red Nation Rising Radio and Red State Talk Radio. And you can always listen to the Conservative Commandos, even if you don't have a radio or a computer, all you need is your phone, 712-770-9676. We have with us um, a very special guest, Hans von Spakovsky. He, I, I know you know who he is, but what the heck, I'm supposed to introduce him, right? Um, <laughs> Hans is, he's uh, with the Heritage Foundation. He's a legal scholar there. He's uh, a former member of the FEC. That's the Federal Election Commission. He has uh, uh, written extensively on uh, voter fraud and, and issues like that. But because of his uh, just expertise in the law, he is actually a font of knowledge on many topics, not just election uh, fraud or the uh, problems we have with our system where people who shouldn't be voting are attempting to. And today is such a day. He has written an excellent article, and uh, it talks about something that's in the news, and that's the Uranium One deal. So welcome first, Hans, to the show. Well, thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Always glad to have you on the show. And uh, so you've written this article. It's in the Daily Signal, and it's entitled Seven Questions the Justice Department Should Answer or Must Answer About Uranium One and the Clinton Foundation. So let's start off just for in case our listeners have been, uh, you know, away on an island somewhere and don't know what we're talking about. um, Just give us a quick, uh, you know, bring us up to speed. Sure. Um, Well, in 2009, the FBI was contacted by a U.S. businessman who's in the uranium mining business in the U.S. And he said uh, that – the Russian nuclear industry, and there's one big company in, in Russia, it's called Rosatom, it's, it's owned by the, the Russian government, was using bribery, kickbacks, extortion, and money laundering to get a foothold in the American uranium mining business. So the FBI uh, told this guy, we'll play along, and uh, they started gathering evidence on this. Um, eventually, actually f- five years later, uh, the Justice Department charged a Russian official who was in charge of the U.S. subsidiary of the Russian company with one charge of money laundering, and you know he entered into a plea agreement, and that seemed to be the end of the case. But what we now have found out is that, look, they knew about this. They, the FBI, which at the time was under Bob Mueller, they knew about this in 2009. Well, in 2010, when the Russian company um, wanted to buy uh, Uranium One, uh, which is this big uranium mining company, that had to be in the U.S. That had to be approved by a a committee that's made up of 14 government agencies. It's called the Committee on Foreign Investment, and it, it included as members of that committee were Eric Holder, the then Attorney General, and Hillary Clinton. And it turns out that Bob Mueller. Neither Bob Mueller nor Eric Holder told this committee that this Russian company that was that was buying Uranium One was involved in this this uh, extensive bribery and extortion scheme. They also didn't tell them anything about the fact that one of the other things the informant uh, uncovered was that these Russian officials were contributing tens of millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation while the Secretary uh, of State was Hillary Clinton. So the the committee approved it, and this sale basically allowed this Russian company to take over about 20% of the American uranium uh, industry, which is a very big deal because, uh, you know, atomic power, that's about – 20% of the nation's uh, electrical power, and the U.S. only produces about one-fifth of the uranium that it it needs. The other really weird thing about this was that here they had all this extensive evidence of uh, bribery and other things, and yet they only um, uh, uh, laid one money laundering charge against this one Russian official instead of all the other things, and that indictment didn't mention a word about all the money being paid to the Clinton Foundation, and the FBI allowed this to go on for five years before they finally uh, moved. I I mean, it's just unbelievable. The other thing that happened was 
again, uh, unexplainable, they, the FBI forced a non-disclosure agreement on the informant, the U.S. businessman, that said he couldn't talk about this in public. I've never seen something like that before, and there's no explanation of why they put a non-disclosure agreement on this guy so that he could reveal what he knew about it. That's amazing. So, I mean, I think up to this point, probably most of our listeners assume that the big scandal with respect to Uranium One was that Hillary played a role in approving it, and she got a lot of money for it. But it sounds to me like this isn't just Hillary's scandal. This is Bob Mueller's scandal. This is Eric Holder's scandal. This is these are people who absolutely knew about this and just kept their mouth shut and let it be silent, as if it was you know unimportant. You know, like like maybe they knew the guy had uh, you know eggs Benedict for breakfast, and of course they right. wanted no, to mention that because it's irrelevant what the man ate for breakfast. But yeah, it's no, that's to... that's very true. So um, this is interesting because. Um, at least up until now, I suspect the majority of our listeners thought that this was uh, solely a problem for Hillary. Um, this, of course, a- a- makes me want to ask this question. You know, when you're uh, serving in a uh, legal capacity, uh, the rules of ethics require you to not only not have a conflict of interest, but to not have the appearance of a conflict of interest. Uh, does Robert Mueller pass that test? Well, I tell you, um, I, I think he needs to appear before um, the congressional committee that's now investigating this and explain why in 2010, when this government committee was looking at the sale, and he already had information uh, from an active investigation about the kickbacks and everything else that this company was engaging in, why he failed to inform this committee about it, why his boss, Eric Holder, failed to notify the committee about it, and why, by the way, the other thing that Mueller failed to do was neither the House nor the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committees were ever briefed about what was going on with Uranium One. Wow. Um, It seems to me that at this point, if he's doing an investigation of all things Russia, uh, attempts to influence um, American policy, elections, etc. Um, he has this big hole that he kind of, I think, is going to be predisposed to want not not want to look at too much, because well, he's got he's a huge that. conflict of interest. No, right. yeah, he's got a huge conflict of interest over this. Right. That's a, that. That strikes me as. I mean, it's not the appearance of a conflict of interest. It strikes me he has one. But at any rate, yeah, no, he he he, he does, and we need to know. Was it Mueller that decided to put that non-disclosure uh, uh, agreement, uh, force it onto the informant? Who at the Justice Department did that, and what was the reason for it? Oh, very interesting. Now, isn't there another fellow? Is that the same fellow that's got the non-disclosure that was just – is this the one we're talking about that just got it released so he could talk to Congress? Yes. Yes, the Sessions, the Jeff Sessions uh, Justice Department just lifted that so that this informant can testify to the Congressional Committee investigating this, which is a good first step. Next, the Justice Department needs to turn over uh, all of the files on this investigation. Wow. This is a sort of a – I mean, this is almost depressing because (laughs) it was – I was hoping that this contagion was actually contained, meaning it was kind of a Hillary Clinton problem. We all know how dirty the Clintons are and that it wasn't a widespread problem. But this just makes it sound like it's it's half the Obama administration is is kind of in on the problem, um, which isn't actually, I guess, in some respects that shocking. I mean, Frontiers of Freedom was one of the groups that was targeted. Um, we always knew that this was, you know, kind of just using government as a tool to target enemies, political enemies. Uh, not uh, good faith uh, enforcement of uh, of the uh, tax code, but but uh, it just my point is it wasn't just at the IRS, it wasn't just Hillary Clinton. It's it seems like this uh, awful corrupt disease seems to be spreading, and, and it's uh, troubling. Our time's about it for this segment, uh, Hans. But I wanted to uh, maybe just in our in the last uh, twenty thirty seconds ask you. Um, do you have any ideas why either Holder or Mueller didn't brief the committee on this? Um, is it possible it was an oversight, or does that just seem silly? Well, I guess it could have been an oversight, but if it was, then um, 
they were obviously pretty lackadaisical in doing their jobs and carrying out their duties as the head of the FBI and the head of the Justice Department, which doesn't say very, very much about their competence. I, I would agree with that. It, it, you know, it's one thing you might forget about it until such time as you see their name on a, uh, a piece of paper saying we have to prove them. And then you go, oh, wait a minute. I think I've seen that name before. <laughs> you know, and then you, <laughs> it would jog your memory. But OK, right. well, we're going to go to a break and we will be right back. I just want to remind our listeners that we are coming to you on the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are all over the globe. And even if you don't have a radio or a broadcast tower nearby, there's Al Gore's amazing Internet. We've got American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AMFM 24-7. We are everywhere. And we will be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution, and that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family. Starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family, that's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. I'm Sharon Angle, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. Drink my wine. 
This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. This is George Landreth, and of course, I want to remind you, you can check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com, ccrshow.com. Lots of information there, and you can always uh, listen to, uh, you know, I guess there are podcasts when, you, when it's no longer live radio, but uh, rebroadcasts, whatever you want to call those. We also are, are at Red State, uh, Red State Talk Radio and Red Nation Rising Radio. And if you get stuck and you all got the phone, you can still listen in, 712-770-9676. We have been talking to Hans von Spakovsky. He, as I, I feel silly introducing him because everyone's kind of going, yeah, 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 I know. But um, you've seen him. You've seen him on television. He is, he's at the Heritage Foundation. He's a legal scholar there. Uh, one of his areas of expertise, I say one because there are many, but one of them is election law and uh, – how sometimes the election law is played with to uh, have an impact on outcomes. And he's been active in that. And I'm sure that's where you may have uh, seen him before. But today we're talking about the Uranium One deal and what went down with that. And it's been a very interesting conversation. Now, Hans, um, let's go through some of those questions and talk about kind of what they might mean and in your article, because you've got this great article, basically the seven questions that the uh, Justice Department needs to answer about Uranium One in the Daily Signal, and I wanted you to kind of walk us through what some of those uh, issues are. If you don't think we can get through them all, then uh, hit the ones you think are the most important. Well, we've talked about the most important ones, which is, you know, why didn't the FBI and the head of the Justice Department notify the committee that was looking at approving this Russian um, purchase of a part of the American Uranium? Why didn't they brief them about this uh, bribery uh, scheme, racketeering scheme that was going on? Why didn't they brief the House or Senate intelligence committees? Why did they delay the indictment of the main Russian official involved in this for five years and allowed this kickback scheme to be going on for that long? And why did they reduce the charges that they could have brought against Mikorin? Um Why did they suppress all of the evidence of the influence peddling that was clearly going on with the Russian officials sending large amounts of money to, to the Clinton Foundation. Um, why did they put a non-disclosure agreement on the informant? Was it was there some law enforcement justification for it, or uh, if not, was it simply to uh, make sure there was no embarrassment for the Clinton Foundation and others? And you know, who were the people at the Justice Department and the FBI who made these? crucial decisions that all of that and and look the bottom line you know those are all specific questions but the bottom line question is is why would the obama administration approve the sale of 20 percent of our uranium industry to a hostile government power you know russia under vladimir putin is very hostile to us and yet we basically approve the sale of one-fifth of our uh, uranium industry to the Russian government. Why would they do that? Yeah, and it's not like this was one-fifth of our, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, silly putty uh, reserves. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was something important, uranium, which yep. either for energy or for uh, weaponry could become important. And we, uh, as you, I think, mentioned earlier, we don't have enough of it as it is. In other words, they weren't giving the Russians some of our ec- our surplus we're actually short as it is, so uh, very kind of odd um, uh, turn of events. Now, um, in my experience, you don't have non-disclosure agreements with an informant. Obviously, if they're involved in uh, grand jury testimony, they're sworn to secrecy while the grand right. jury is going on. But basically, once the process is over, people are... It just strikes me as very odd that they would do a non-disclosure agreement. I'm trying to figure out what would be the possible uh, valid prosecutorial purposes of that be. Well, I actually talked to a friend of mine who's a former assistant uh, U.S. attorney, and he told me that he had never, ever seen a non-disclosure agreement uh, put on an informant. Now, 
I can see um, justifying having a, a perhaps a non-disclosure agreement while a law enforcement investigation is ongoing to ensure that the informant doesn't you know blow the investigation by making it public. But even if even if that's the situation, obviously. Once you, once the indictment comes out, once the person, the, the defendant is convicted, there's no reason for the non-disclosure provisions to continue. And yet here here we are, two years, two years after the Russian official involved in all this was convicted and sentenced, and o- only two weeks ago did the Justice Department um, lift the non-disclosure agreement. So, I, you know... I really don't see how they could justify uh, imposing it and keeping it on for so long after the case was supposedly over. Uh, I agree with you. I mean, I just I, I've tried to you know be imaginative here, creative, and think of what could the possible rationale be. And and like you, and like your friend who's a former prosecutor, I scratch my head and say this doesn't make sense to me. I've never seen that before, and it seems like it violates uh, sound public policy that normally you know we we allow people to, you know. We only have secret courts when it's, ap- I mean, you know, a FISA court, for example, but we don't have star chambers anymore. We, we essentially will do the investigation in secret because you don't want to blow the investigation. But the trial itself is an open court. And uh, if the person can testify in open court, it would seem to me they could later after the trial uh, say what they want to say about the trial. Oh, look, I, I agree with you. And that's why, again, um, we need to get an, an explanation from the Justice Department. And what's, what's very important here is that um, the Justice Department needs to not obstruct the, uh, the congressional investigation. And that's why I said, you know, in addition to now allowing this informant to testify, um, they need to turn over every document, every file that the FBI and the Justice Department has on this case uh, to congressional investigators so they can look through it. And they don't have any – there's no justified reason for withholding that now when the investigation prosecution is over. Uh, I agree. Now, my assumption is obviously someone like uh, uh, Jeff Sessions is not going to obstruct the problem would be is further down from him, there may be people in, you know, deeply embedded in the uh, Justice Department who don't agree with Jeff Sessions, and they actually agreed with the stuff that Eric Holder was doing, and they want to protect him. Is that what your fear is? That there's this kind of deep state, not just in yes. the State it, Department, it is. but it's Partic- also there. Yeah, particularly if um, look if there's. If there's stuff in the files that makes uh, just officials look bad, uh, makes it look like they acted uh, on a partisan political basis, uh, the people who are still there who are involved in that um, aren't going to want that to to be made public, and they're probably going to do everything they can to persuade the political leadership um, not to let uh, this information out. Or to drop the relevant memo behind the uh, file cabinet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah something like that i don't know it's uh so um, or, or to make sure and make sure there aren't any uh backup tapes you know like in the irs uh in the huge irs investigation <laughs> right <laughs> right yeah they tried to get rid of evidence there it's just that doggone it the modern world there's uh, copies of everything everywhere uh, right i can remember when i was uh, a young attorney and i was talking to my client and they kind of hinted in a in a conversation that was involved a large document production that they didn't really want to produce everything because they were worried that some of their trade secrets would get out. And I explained to them, you know, one, we have to produce everything. If there's a trade secret, we can certainly have it produced under protective order. And it'll be photocopied on a different color of paper and there'll be a clear, you know, all these procedures to make sure it doesn't get out into the general public. I said, but, you know, this is uh, – I, I, I wanted to make a really – give them a good sense of how dangerous it would be to play a game. I said, because, you know, there's, this is, you know, in the eighties, but there's still copy machines and uh, microfilm. And I just said, I I would never play this game. This is not a, you know, if you want me to make sure there's a, a non-disclosure, you know, between the parties so that this stuff doesn't end up uh, out in the general public for uh, others, that's fine, but we're not going to play any games with the procedure. So I hope that the attorneys, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the Justice Department, or at least that smart. 
Well, I hope they are. I hope they are too, and I hope they make the the political leadership makes the right decision on right. it. Right, that's you know do the right thing. Um, well, Hans, we're running low on on time, but I want to make sure you have a chance to a give us any parting thoughts on this issue, and then and then finally also, how can people follow you? Whether it's on Twitter, where they can find your your books, the the um, what your upcoming book is going to be, that kind of stuff. Just so people need to have you in their favorites list. Sure. Uh, well, they can see my writings at heritage.org, heritage.org, and both of the books that I wrote with John Fund are available uh, on at both Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, and there aren't too many Von Spakovskys <laughs> over there, so they can easily pull them up. Fair enough. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for being with us and, and helping us see, I think, some of the broader issues on this uh, Uranium One deal. Uh, I, I myself, I'm sure our listeners had seen it for too narrowly before reading your article and talking to you. And you've helped us expand our vision a bit and have a better sense of what it was really all about. And more importantly, what we need to find out going forward. That's a great service. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, George Landreth, I wanted to thank you for sitting in today as my co-host. Please tell our audience how they could follow your work. Absolutely. First, I just want to say I always enjoy sitting with you. It's uh, a pleasure. It's the place I want to be. But um, Frontiers of Freedom is where I uh, hang my hat. So ff.org on Twitter. It's uh, at George Landra. So those are the two places. Okay, George, and uh, do me a favor and thank our guest. Absolutely. Well, you know, we owe a great uh, debt of gratitude to both Sidney Powell and Hans von Spakovsky because they just did a great job of enlightening us. I thought I, I, I feel like we all got an advanced degree in important legal principles. And as Americans and as conservatives, that serves us well. All right, George. And, you know, we always have great guests on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Got a little critique from a listener. It says, Rick Trader, you stink. Yeah, I might stink, but we have terrific guests. You got to give us give us that. We do have terrific guests. But with that, we got to run. We got to go. Take care. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow on the radio. This is J.D. Manier, co-host on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Are you among the millions of Americans who feel uncertain when it comes to their health care? We're happy to inform you that there is a solution, and that solution is Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of like-minded people that work together to pay for their medical costs. There are no networks, so you get to choose your doctor and hospital. Liberty HealthShare allows you to easily decide how, when, and where you will access health care. It could be the best practical, moral, and economical choice for you and your family, starting at $107 a month for a single, up to $449 a month for a family. That's mom, dad, and all kids. This is the way health care should be. For more information, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org and regain control over your health care costs. Together, we're changing health care for good. Hey, online radio listeners, help keep Internet radio free and its advertising relevant to you. Simply open your radio player and click on the survey banner now and take a quick questionnaire about the advertising you hear on your favorite online stations. It only takes about one minute to complete and submit your opinions. Your answers will detail the advertising you've heard recently across different radio stations. So make your voice heard. Open your radio player, click on the survey banner to participate now. Thank you for listening and for your participation.